Okay, resetters, I am officially going live on two channels here. So let me make sure I can look at the computer and, and see what's going on. Um, so happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Face Fast Training Week. Um, I really wanted to come to you guys and answer your questions about Fast Training Week. Um, we've got a lot of new people um, on our platforms, a lot of new fasters, and I just want to make sure that you're getting your fucking questions um, answered. So let me start off with this. This morning I was interviewed on a news station and they were talking about uh, the first question, actually the little behind the scenes is when we got before the interview went live, uh, the host asked me, gosh, you know, there's so many people here in the studio that are really excited about fasting and why is it that fasting has taken over and has such has such a uh, a crazy following, and why are so many people loving fasting? So, um, and he, let me start by answering that question because it's it's amazing, like it's incredible how uh, as you all know how fasting changes everything about your health, and it, it it starts with this concept. I have I've said this before to you guys, and I hope. Uh, I think it's worth repeating like every single time we talk about fasting is that you have two energy sources. So you have the energy source that you get from eating food. We call it sugar burner and it's not, it's a, a fine energy source. We don't want to villainize this energy source. And if you eat the right foods, it's a really good energy source. Um, but if you're eating all day long, then what's happening is you're not ever getting to this other energy source. And the other energy source is the fat burning energy source. Now, that's why we love fasting, because when you start to fast, you take food out of the equation. And now what you're doing is you're going in and you are tapping into the fat burning energy source. Now, how would you know that you're in the fat burning energy source? Okay, there's a couple things. One is that you will feel energy like nobody's business. So for me, this typically shows up at about 10 o'clock in the morning. I feel a little bit like I'm dragging and then 10 happens, I get a little hungry and then I can, I can literally feel like that switch where the body is like, okay, now I'm gonna switch into burning energy from fat. And when it makes that switch, you start to see that there is a shift in a couple of things. There's a shift in your hunger. You go from being hungry at 10 to not being hungry at 1030. And there is a shift in mental clarity. You can go from feeling like you are a little foggy in the brain or a little slow in the brain and then boom, now you're in this place where you're like, whoa, my brain is supercharged. And you start to notice that hunger goes away. So if you're new to fasting, what the first concept that I want you to understand is we're trying to get you over into this fat burning energy source. So this is, a, this is, this is your first step and you will know that you're in that energy source because of those symptoms I just mentioned, but also the presence of ketones. So ketones are amazing in small amounts. The goal is not to get like tons of ketones, but the idea is to get into ketosis where your body is now in this place where it's burning energy from these fat sources. And then once you get ketones, remember a couple of things. One, ketones go up into the brain and they start to repair neurons. So that's a beautiful thing. Two, that the as the as the longer you go throughout your day with ketones, the calmer you feel. And I'm kind of curious, like if you guys put it in the notes. I'm I'm go I'm here live on YouTube and Resetter Collaborative on Facebook. I'm live in two places right now, so put it in the notes because we have so many new fasters that flooded onto our social media last week from uh, from the re menopause reset. Uh, and so I just want to make sure that everybody's getting the tools that they need and they're understanding how important it is that we use this other fuel source. The other cool thing that I just have to continue to point out is that when you are a fat burner, when you are operating from this fat burning system, 
what you're doing is you are making these cells, these 72 trillion cells that you have, you're making them bulletproof against infections. So a lot of, we've heard of a lot of people on our platforms that have said, gosh, you know, members in their family got the virus and they found that the family got sick, but they'd been fasting and they hadn't gotten sick. Okay, well, why is that? When you operate from this fat burning energy source, what you're doing is if a virus or a bacteria or a parasite or any kind of pathogen comes into that cell, what happens is that it, has, especially with viruses, they have to live off the cell's energy source. So if that cell is using fat as an energy source, the virus, the bacteria will die. It does, it can't replicate. If it's, if you, if that person, that virus, that pathogen, bacteria comes into a cell that's using sugar for energy, it repeats. So I literally look at intermittent fasting and I'm like, why we need everybody to be doing this? Why, why don't we have the whole world intermittent fasting right now? It does not cost money. It is, doesn't take time. It just takes an awareness. So what I did this week in an attempt to help all of you that maybe read the menopause reset and you're trying to understand fasting or you found my, my channel through other things, other ways is I'm trying to go back to the basics and teach you how to intermittent fast. If you have felt like intermittent fasting wasn't working for you, please hang in there because it will work. You just have to understand you got to train the body. That would be like, me saying that a 10K, I'm going to go run a 10K and I've never run before. And I go and I run two miles and I go, ah, no, 10Ks don't work for me. My body doesn't like a 10K. My body's just maybe not trained to go run a 10K. So it's the same thing with fasting. We have to train it. And that is why we do these fast training weeks. So um, I just wanted to point that out. And I really just, it, oh, the other thing this, this host on this TV show this morning um, it'll come out. I don't, we don't actually know exactly when it'll come out. It's called the, um, the talk of it, Alabama. So if anybody's in Alabama, it'll show up on your news stations there. Um, but at the end of the, of the interview, he said to me, okay, what's like one thing that everybody needs to know about fasting? If they're going to start fasting, what's like one little tip you can give. And this was my, my, my tip is when we come to fasting, we have a lot of programs up in our brain and we have a lot of thoughts in our in our brain and they and our brain starts talking at us. If you want to know your relationship to food and what holds you back in that relationship with food, start fasting because your brain starts talking at you. I mean, I, I've said this before. I grew up in a household where my mom taught me that you eat all day. That's how you, uh, that's how, you know, if you're low in energy, you eat like eating was the source of energy. So when I started fasting, that little limiting belief was like talking at me, like you're tired, you're hungry, like, what are you doing? And the thing is, is that you just have to ignore what's going on up here because your body's got this, your body knows what to do, which is why those of you that have been fasting are starting to experience these incredible results because your body's like, thank you. I've just been waiting for you to stop eating food so I can heal you. I've been waiting for you to stop eating food so I can burn and burn fat. I've been waiting for you to stop eating food so I can lower inflammation. It, it's like the most simplest idea I've ever seen. So anyhow, I know I'm on a rant today. Uh, but I just want the whole world to step into this. So those of you who have read the menopause reset, let me just start off by saying thank you for, for purchasing it. Oh my gosh. Last week, uh, we were trending number one in women's health. We've been for the last five weeks, number one in menopause on Amazon is just really, really cool. Your support. Thank you for the amazing reviews you guys have given uh, on Amazon. I just, I want you to be healthy. I want you to have energy. Um, so I'm just so uh, pleased that you're engaging in this information. Okay. With that, uh, and I apologize if the sound is off today. Uh, I've, I don't have my full technology going, but, uh, 
my hubby's telling me that the sound is seems so, to be yeah. be okay. I can yell too. Um, <laughs> don't yell. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have a lot of questions. Okay, so I'll um, shut up. Then. So we have questions, and the questions were put in the community page on our YouTube. Channel. Okay, so let me just say we're trying something new on Tuesdays, especially on Fast Training Week. We're trying to get to your questions in as many different platforms as we possibly can. Just so you guys know, every Thursday I go live on YouTube, um, and I we answer the questions of the for the people who have put questions on our community page on YouTube first. So we go to those first, and then time permitting, I go to uh, to um, other ones. We are now on Clubhouse. You, if you are on Clubhouse, you can go find us there. Um, I'm all over Instagram, Fa um, Facebook Resetter Collaborative is where we're at. So we're trying to get to you guys in every every place that we can. We do not want you to not succeed at fasting. Okay. Great. I'm ready. Um, so the the first sort of theme of questions, um, and multiple people are asking about this. Okay. Uh, Unusual cycle times, so people definitely want to know about if they have a 33-day cycle or a 45-day cycle, how do they implement some of the okay. recommendations? Okay. So that's, that's one part of, the, of, why don't we start with that? We'll yeah, start. okay. While you're talking, I love, on YouTube, you guys, I can see your comments, so thank you for your amazing com comments. I'd love to get to know you. Okay, here is the question. The question is, I have a 33-day cycle. How do I time fasting to that? Okay, so we're going to be teaching this in my academy for the next two months. So um, I have another book that's coming out. It will come out at the end of this year or next. It is a fasting manual for women. And it's all built around this concept called the fasting circle that I created. And on the fasting circle, I've been talking about it on different podcasts. So some of you may have heard me talk about it there. Um, the fasting circle basically is a way for if you are a woman with a cycle, you could go, OK, today is day 10 uh, of my cycle. What fasts and eating styles would be best for me to maximize my hormones? So we're really excited about this visual. I'm teaching it in my academy. So come join me there if you want to learn more about it. The question was, I have a 33 day cycle. How do I time this? Well, this was one of our challenges when we put the fasting circle together is we were like, OK, how is this going to work? Because uh, not every woman has a different length cycle. So let me just sort of explain the fasting circle and then I'll talk about the length of the cycle. So the first 10 days. So day one of your cycle is when you start to bleed. This is when you need to have your like use feminine care products. So. Day one to day 10, your body needs to make estrogen. Now, when you make hormones, what I want you to know is that hormones pulse. It's not like they're not like a switch that gets turned on and on or on and off. They're like you get a little bit and then nothing and then a little bit and then nothing. And as you get closer to day 10, you get a bunch of the pulses come faster. So in this time period, you want to be doing more keto, more autophagy. You want to be doing more fasting. Those first 10 days are critical. Now, once you come out of day 10, there's this little place we call it ovulation. Um, I renamed it because uh, like luteal phase, follicular phase, like these are boring. So I renamed ovulation. Uh, ovulation is kind of a boring name to manifestation. Because you know what happens in this little weird four day window is that you start to get all your hormones. You've got estrogen at its highest, you've got testosterone at its highest, and you have a little blurb of progesterone. So during that time in the manifestation phase, you want to stick to intermittent fasting. You don't want to go into long fast. And then you want to lean into more of your um, animal based carnivore diet. Um, and you want to you lean into more leafy greens so you can break that estrogen down and you can utilize your testosterone. I have a vision where instead of looking at our workouts as women on a weekly schedule, we look at it on a monthly schedule and we go, OK, cardio is day one through day 10. Muscle building is in day 11 through day uh, 15, which is manifestation. 
that when we come out of manifestation, we have like a four day window there where we can uh, do more fasting, go back into more fasting, more cardio, more keto. And then the week before your cycle around day 20, I want you to fast less. I want you to slow down on the fasting. And then I want you to do less keto. You don't want to be in keto. You want to do more of those, those hormone building foods that I talk about all the time. Now the question, and you do that till the day you bleed. Question is, well, what if I have a 33 day cycle? Okay, so this is a predicament because you would be then on day 20 to day 33, you would be, that'd be a long hormone building time. So the first thing that I'm going to say is that if you are fat adapted, if you know how to use this fat burn or energy burning system, and you've been doing it for a while, then what you can do is you can do longer fasts on those days. This is just for the person who has the, the 33 day cycle, um, doesn't want to be carb loading for 13 days, wants to keep the weight where in a good place, then you might go to more 15, 17 hour fa um, uh, fast and do like one meal and a snack of those hormone building fits. You might even make your biggest meal in the early afternoon and your snack at night. That's another little trick so that you don't um, gain weight uh, and make sure that you keep your, your uh, metabolism where you want it. So that would be the trick if you have a 33 and you don't want to do 13 days of uh, hormone building foods. You can lean into a little more fasting. If you're brand new to fasting, don't do that because the challenge the week before our cycle is that we want to make sure that we don't raise cortisol. Anything that raises cortisol kills progesterone. And if you kill progesterone, progesterone is what makes you calm. It's what gives you a, a period. This is why so many women, they start fasting, they do one meal a day, they lose their period because they don't, they're not minding progesterone. So I don't know who asked that, but I hope that helps. Um, but that would be how I would approach it. Okay, we have a lot of people, there are multiple people on the, um posting about they're afraid of going away from one meal a day or having oh the opposite more. so people are afraid yeah. Of yeah. that they're going to gain weight they're yeah. going to have uh adverse outcomes but yeah not the outcome they're looking okay for. okay i and i'm again i'm sitting here looking right at my youtube um comments so i'm kind of curious if you guys are concerned about moving away from one meal a day put it in the notes um, people feel like a lot of people feel like they they binge on carbs too much. Yeah, so there's a lot of people that are. Yeah, they say, oh, I, I do that. And then I just start binging away on carbs. Yeah. OK, well, so here's the trick is that um, for women, I just want to point out that um, we're not all the same. This is why you're not seeing a lot of science done specifically on women, because our hormones are all different at different times. So it makes us hard to study. Um, so. If you are doing one meal a day, let's kind of break this down into simple steps. If you're doing one meal a day, you're a woman, you're loving it, and you're like, I don't want to do less than one meal a day. I don't want to carb load. I got my weight where I want it. I'm nervous. Okay, so if that is you, the first thing I would say is, do, do you have any signs that your progesterone is tanking? Now, this I'm speaking to specifically women that still have a cycle, postmenopausal women. I'll talk to you here in a moment. So if you still have, let's let's say you're under 40 and you have still have a cycle, you're doing one meal a day. What I would tell you is the week, if you want to stay with your one meal a day that week before your period, um, I would encourage you to make that one meal a day those uh, specifically do squashes or potatoes, um, and you can do some grass-fed meat. You may not need to do the um, citrus fruits, tropical fruits, beans. Those are going to be a little bit more higher on the glycemic index. So that you could be strategic about the foods that you do, and you can stick with one meal a day if you're under 40 and you have a regular cycle. Now, if you're over 40, 40 to 55, you're in those perimenopausal years and your cycle's all over the place, you're going to have to mind your progesterone because you're losing progesterone and you want to make sure 
that you're not low in, um, that you're not like losing your hair. You want to make sure you're not spotting. You want to make sure your, your sleep isn't going away. You want to make sure that anxiety, that body anxiety that I talk about isn't r- ramped up. So if those things aren't happening and you're between 40 and 55, then you can follow what I just told the women under 40 to do. You might try a snack and a meal. That might be good. So maybe you do 17 hours and you, and then you might also, you guys remember that meal could be earlier in the day. So you could do your big meal in the, at like two or three and have a snack at night. So you could switch that around a little bit. Um, but women between 40 and 55, you really have to mind your progesterone. Because as progesterone tanks, it's going to make menopausal symptoms, perimenopausal symptoms way worse. If you're under 40, you might get away with it a little bit more by doing just one meal a day that week before. Okay, so that that those those are those two generations or age groups. Now, what do we do with the postmenopausal woman? Well, you know, I think every woman over 40 honestly should get a Dutch test so you know what your progesterone levels are at. If you're postmenopausal, you love where your weight is at, you're, you don't have hot flashes, you're feeling really good, then what you might be able to get away with is just one, of, one day a week where you lean into those um, carb-rich foods and you pair it with like a 15 or a 17-hour fasting. Um, if you're in a good place, that, that would be the way I would handle it. Um, but there is an art to this. And again, this is what we're teaching in the academy, but there is an art to figuring out how to move away from the one meal a day so you can build the hormones. And a lot of that comes from just trusting your body that it needs to go in and out of these two metabolic switching moments. So, um, My concern is for those of you that are doing one meal a day and your hair is falling out and you've lost your cycle and you're, you know, it's not worth it. It's not, we need to teach you how to be able to switch in and out. So practice makes perfect. So the more you do it, the the better you'll get at it. One one thing I always like to remind people is that one of the greatest studies ever done um, on fasting was called the every other day diet. And they took a group of people who were standard American diet and they said, OK, for the next year, you can eat whatever you whatever you want. You can eat whatever you want just every other day. So on the days when you're not uh, on the off days, you're going to fast. So what they did is you did one day where you were they ate like in the beginning, their standard American diet. Then they fasted and then one day ate what they wanted and then they fasted. And so what they found is the first half of the year, people kept with their junk food. They kept with their standard American diet. But as they hit about that that six-month mark, they started making better choices. Because as you train your body to do this switching, it does it much easier and the binge eating typically goes away. The carb craving typically goes away. So be playful. Just be playful about it. And don't don't feel like you need to... Um, it, the rigidity around the, the fasting and the switching is just difficult. And that creates, it elongates the, the learning curve and it makes it harder for us to understand switching. So I know that's not like a black or white answer, but that's what I got for you. Nuance. Every, yeah, a lot nuance. of things nuance and individual, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Linda wants to know, uh, could you give an example of a hormone building meal? Yeah. Okay, you guys, uh, Linda wants to know a hormone building meal. Um, if you if you don't follow me on Instagram, go follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm learning reels. Uh, so I'm learning to, to take my meals and video them so that you guys can sort of see the different meals. I showed one of my favorite ways to break a fast yesterday on my reels on Instagram. So, um, and if so many of you guys were like, yes, more, we want more of that. So I will give you more of that. But a hormone building meal. Um, so I'm a, I'm in love with squashes. I have no idea about the rest of you, but oh my gosh, like butternut squash, honey nut squashes. We have a bunch of those around here. Um, I mean, I'm in love with with squashes. So I do a lot of squashes, a lot of potatoes, and a lot of greens for a hormone building meal. And then I'll do like a little grass fed steak. 
So it'll be really uh, common for me to take a bowl and to put like uh, cook some butternut squash, uh, put it in the bowl, put some lettuce on top of it. Um, and then to put a little grass fed burger on top of that, that would be a, a typical hormone building day for me. Um, and I might even, uh, we do a Sunday night dinner with my family. My parents come over, the kids will invite friends. It's kind of a big, a big, the biggest meal of our week. And it's very common on our table to see chopped up squash with, with different kinds of potatoes, all different kinds of sweet potatoes because um, they feed the bacteria in different parts of our intestinal tract. And I'll, I'll, I'll do it in like a big dish where I cube it, cook it. And then we do that with like a roasted chicken. That would be a protein building meal. So I'm uh, citrus fruits. I'll do some oranges. Um, I, I used to have a, a mango addiction. So anything that I used to be addicted to, I'm a little careful to not lean into it too much. So uh, but you could do some tropical fruits as well. Okay. But stay tuned. I'll do more on Instagram so I can show you more examples of the hormone building meals that I do. Okay. Um, I'm waiting for yeah, no, my uh, question guy. Yeah. I, I think we've done a bunch of these kind of, cause I grouped a bunch together. So, okay. um, let's see. Uh, oh, there is one question about fasting and how to incorporate it if someone is obese but wants to get pregnant. So, oh my gosh, they, they were recommended to lose some weight. Oh my gosh, okay, so, you, you like this. Oh question. my gosh, okay, I have to tell you a story. So, I don't know if you heard the question. Um, I'm gonna tell a story about uh, yeah, I won't, I won't tell you who it is, we'll, we'll announce it later, but. Um, a patient of mine uh, has was struggling to get pregnant, so uh, for a year, and uh, no, you know, tried to get pregnant, didn't get, couldn't get pregnant, and she went to her doctor. And her doctor basically said, "You're never going to get pregnant until you lose weight," and that's what this question is. The question is, um, what you know, uh, how can I use fasting to be able for, for fertility? Is that what I'm hearing? Since they want to lose weight, but they're worried about right. okay. fasting not being good okay. for. So, yeah. so check this out. One thing I really want to emphasize is this idea that we're all supposed to fit into some category of BMI is ridiculous. We're all different shapes and sizes. And actually, I will tell you as a menopausal woman, I have been careful to not lose too much weight. I think our hormones do better when we have a little bit of weight on us. Not a lot, but a little bit. So I'm doing more hormone building because I don't want to lose too much weight. So I had this conversation with this patient. I'm like, weight loss is not the goal to get pregnant. The goal is to balance your hormones. So we ran a Dutch test on her. And I taught her the fasting circle. And I said, you're going to do keto and you're going to do fasting the first half of your cycle. At When you're in ovulation, you're going to do more leafy greens and really lean into the many of the foods that will help you break estrogen down. You have a whole microbiome in your gut that's dedicated to breaking estrogen down. We'll feed that microbiome when you're ovulating. And then when you come out of ovulation, I don't want you doing any fasting. We're going to assume that you have a fertilized egg and that um, when you come out of ovulation, I want you going straight into progesterone building days. And so I had her do that. And my thought was she might have to do it for 90 days or so before her she started to be able to get pregnant. One month of that, one month, and she got pregnant after a year of not trying or of trying. Of, after a year of trying, no, getting nothing, one month of following the first half of her cycle, keto and fasting, feeding her microbiome and less fasting when she was ovulating and then going into the, those hormone building phases at, after ovulation. One month she got pregnant didn't, and she didn't need to lose weight to make that happen. So I'm really excited. This That is in the new book that will come out next year. Sorry, that's a long time, but we're teaching it in the academy and it's just really exciting because I think we can change all hormones for women if we start to teach them how to eat and how to fast around their cycle. You can even look at exercise, you can look at stress, I mean, you can look at everything in your cycle that way. So 
Thank you for asking that question. Okay. Um, let's see. The uh, Debbie put that in. Um, so this is Bet, uh, Betty, who uh, has a Dutch test and shows low on all hormones okay. uh, and wants to continue with intermittent fasting. Betty's 50 um, and just got her period after nine months. She's after oh. nine for four months. I, I don't know what that means. Um, so they want basically Betty wants to know if she should still fast if all of her hormones are tanked. Should you so Betty's 50? Mm -hmm. She wants to know if she should still fast if all her hormones sounds like she's in perimenopause. Are, are, are tanked. Yes, yeah, coming and going. Um so yes, because here's what here's the thing to remember. This is the crazy part about hormones. <laughs> this is why it's so difficult. Is let's just break down the sex hormones: estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Estrogen and testosterone are going to be helped by fasting, hands down progesterone is going to be tanked by too much fasting. So if you, what we want to do is learn how to fasting, do fasting variations. If you know, Betty, that your hormones are tanked, I'm going to assume all three of them are tanked. Then what I would do is I would probably take about four days out of the month and uh, or out of the week, four days out of the week, and I would do whatever fast feels good for you and whatever eating style feels good for you. Um, you could do, you know, 17 hours of fasting with like a ketobiotic meal. I would take that for four days out of the week. Then two days, I want you to do the hormone building foods. So maybe you do 13 hours of fasting, or maybe you do no fasting, and you lean into those hormone building foods. And then one day out of the week, you're going to do a longer fast, like a 24 hour fast. And then maybe that night you can do an autophagy meal or a keto, low keto meal. Now, what I just gave you in that weekly amount is that you're going to, that would be how you are going to kind of switch in and out of these different fasting styles. So let me tell you in the, the, the new book, it's coming out next year, is and what we're teaching in, in the academy right now is that there are six different fasts that I think heal us and they're all timed. And I think there are eight different styles of eating that heal us. And what we can do as women is we can time those around our hormones so that we're able to maximize and help per make uh, ourselves bet more healthy estrogens, help keep preserve progesterone and preserve testosterone. So um, I just because you get a Dutch test and, and those hormones are tanked, that doesn't mean that you give up on fasting it means that you need more variation. So I just gave you a weekly variation. Now stay tuned because I'm going to have a 30 day hormone reset for people like that Betty that will be coming out in May and it'll be an experience that we're all doing together. And it will be a way that you can take a woman who is finding that she wants to fast. She wants to do keto, but her either maybe she's perimenopause and her hormones are all over the place, or maybe she's 25 and she's trying to get pregnant. And she, she doesn't have, um, she, her horm she's been on birth control and her hormones are all dysregulated, or maybe she's postmenopausal and like Betty doesn't have a lot of hormones, but is still experiencing hot flashes. So we're going to take this 30 day hormone reset and I'm going to show you how to go through a 30 day process that will help you balance estrogen, progesterone and testosterone at the same time using this variation. So now uh, that is coming until then, Betty, do the four, two, one that I just taught you. OK. OK. Um, sorry. I'm, I'm also answering some stuff on YouTube at the same time. So I'm bouncing the or YouTube, Facebook. Um, Let's see, the, uh, Natasha has a few questions um, and wants to know more about the 222 two, two ah. that you uh, oh, talked yeah. about. And uh, I don't, let's see what exactly. Well, I, let's talk about the 222. Two, yeah. Two, two, two. yeah, talk more about the 222. Okay. Two, two. 
The two, two, two. So I, I, um, I put it out in the videos on YouTube this week. It's a really good hack, you guys. And I don't talk about it enough. Um, and it's good. So basically, you're going to do two tablespoons of MCT oil, two tablespoons of grass-fed dairy or ghee, and two teaspoons of salt. And where you use it is when you're in a longer fast, and let's say you're trying to go 24 hours, and you hit 17 hours, and you're like, oh, brutal, I can't go another, you know, I'll never make it another seven hours, like you're struggling to keep going. So this is where, remember, it's a training, and so you can lean into these, the two, two, two. So what the two tablespoons of MCT oil do is it gets you over that ketogenic energy system. So you make some ketones so that the ketones go up into the brain and kill hunger. So now you're able to go to fast a little longer, which is great. Um, why we do the grass fed dairy is same reason. We're just using a different fat so that we can get you over into the ketogenic energy source. And what the two tables, teaspoons of salt are doing is adding minerals back in. So if you're having any heart palpitations, um, it will make it so that you or any thyroid issues or or you're feeling woozy. It will help with any deficiencies from the loss of minerals that so many of us are experiencing. So it's a really cool hack. You can try different versions of it. I, I'm personally a ghee fan. I know not everybody is. Um, it doesn't have to be all at the same time but it's a really neat way to use fat and, and salt as a tool to get you into ketosis so you fast longer. Now, the question's gonna be that a lot of you I know are gonna have is like, well, gosh, isn't that going to, to pull me out of a fasted state? Isn't, aren't I gonna destroy all the, the strategies that I'm trying to, to uh, in healing effects that I'm trying to get? And the answer is no, because that good fat, what it's doing is it's getting you into to the, the ketogenic energy system a little quicker, but it's also won't raise your blood sugar. So if your blood sugar doesn't go up, you're going to stay in autophagy. If you don't add too much protein in, you're going to stay in autophagy and you're accessing the ketogenic energy system. So now we've not only got you making more ketones, we've not only kept you in autophagy, but since we've got those ketones kicking in with the 222, now you are able to fast longer. So even some of you trying to do the dopamine fast, uh, which is 48 hours resets the dopamine pathways, that's a great, use the 222, it's a really good tool. Remember, I so want you guys to use this as a, uh, as a lifestyle. So it's sometimes we gotta go into these hacks to make the lifestyle a little easier. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm going to ask this question. This is somebody asking specifically, this is on Facebook, asking specifically about the Dutch test and they have a shorter cycle. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have a 23, 24 day cycle. What day should they do the test on if you have a shorter cycle? Um, it should say it in the, in the Dutch, um, Ah, that's a great question. And if you got the Dutch test from us, I would email info at Dr. Mindy Pels and my team will answer that. Um, you can also email the Dutch test, but it should make sure you've read everything on the insert because they do address a lot of that. And I can't remember off the top of my head okay. what, what to do. Okay, so Rachel should reach out. She's reached out once and not gotten a response. So reach out again and then we'll make sure we get a response. Yeah, it, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to say yes. I don't know. Yes, we respond as right. much to everything. So, yeah. Um, okay, we have to get you going because we have an academy call um, okay. that is about to happen. So, okay. uh, you, yeah, bouncing between all these screens is a little challenging. Yeah, I know. So, you guys, so, it, it's been fun today because I like I'm looking right here at all the YouTube comments. So, I love it. I like. I want to help you guys. I want to sit here and just answer all your questions. Um, so thank you for the comments. Thank you for putting in there. Collaborative up there on Facebook. 
Um, you know, the benefit of our collaborative is that you guys are an incredible community. So thank you for always supporting each other. YouTube, if you guys need more support, come into our Facebook collaborative. It's a free Facebook group. And the people in there are very positive. They support each other. So it's a great place to get fasting support. If you guys need more guidance, if you're missing the guidance uh, of this, come into our academy. That's where I am, and that's where my team is able to customize some of this information for you a little bit more. But and it, I, I, again, I, I never want you guys to give up on yourself, so please hang in there. And I'll be back next Thursday uh, on YouTube, and we're, we're trying to find other platforms that I can be doing more Q&As so we can get to uh, all of you. So uh, never give up on yourself. Fasting is amazing. And um, yeah, just love being on this journey with you guys. So have an awesome day. That is really